Dear students, welcome to another episode of PHY 467 Statistical Physics 2. So, today we will talk about Bose-Einstein Statistics. And in Bose-Einstein Statistics, we will talk about Bose-Einstein Condensation and Bose-Einstein Condensation Temperature. अगर आपको याद हो तो लास्ट लेक्चर जो हमने खत्म किया था वो था कि मैंने एक इक्वेशन डिराइव की थी और आपसे कहा था कि वो बिटवीन केमिकल पोटेंशियल एंड टेम्परेचर एंड आई आस्क यू टू प्लॉट इट सो सम ऑफ यू डिड इट एंड डिड इट करेक्टली बेसिकली सो दिस वाज द इक्वेशन भी और के भी थी इक्वेशन नाइन फ्रॉम लास्ट लेक्चर एंड सम ऑफ यू डिड इट करेक्टली एंड आई शो यू वट आई wanted to see so if you see the book that we are following in that book this graph is shown and this is the temperature on the x-axis mu on the mu over kbt on y-axis and you see this is the high temperature limit uh, this uh, dashed line is for uh, bosons and this dashed line is for fermions and you see at higher temperatures they actually uh, superimpose on uh, each other and we see only one line here that's why we had a universal behavior at higher temperature so we don't have a differentiation between bosons and fermions and uh, the case of uh, bosons is uh, different at lower temperatures and fermions is totally opposite so uh, we have studied actually fermions previously although we have not studied their mu at uh, low temperatures but still we will study the chemical potential of bosons uh, in this range and this temperature actually corresponds to the uh, Bose-Einstein condensation temperature and uh, the thing is the, the, the graph that I asked you to plot actually does not look li exactly like this so I wanted to clarify that how it should look like so if you see now this graph this is some give you this will give you the actual representation of uh, high high temperature limit so you see there is a, a uniform uh, uh, behavior at uh, uh, higher temperatures e, uh, forget m h and e so you should just focus on the solid line here so this solid line is actually the cumulative behavior of uh, fermions and bosons at higher temperatures and as soon as you uh, cross somehow some uh, finite temperature range so this uh, solution actually uh, somehow converges towards the y-axis and it has somehow some kind of uh, plateau region here and the detail of this curve you will find I, I give you a paper for this uh, if you some someone is interested so you, you should go on internet and read about this this is a 2019 paper on the chemical potential of ideal Fermi and Bose gases by Coven et al so um, it's uh, the journal of low temperature physics so in that paper they actually have calculated all these uh, different uh, functions in terms of uh, Poly logarithmic functions and uh, Riemann zeta functions and you will get to know what is going on actually here so this is low temperature limit we will not go in into detail of this uh, whole um, uh, solid curve but okay uh, it's a really interesting paper and I uh, uh, strongly recommend that you should uh, go and have a look at that paper what we will do today is a bit different it's not exactly the same thing that we did uh, last time so today we will see that if you you are uh, in at this temperature what happens to a bosonic gas or the a gas of free uh, bosons so our today's attention will be focused on the behavior at and below this temperature and we will derive somehow a relationship to reach at this temperature T naught that corresponds to basically uh, Bose Einstein condensation temperature. So let's start. So I write in detail what I want to say. So at low temperatures,
chemical potential mu becomes positive so remember that we are discussing free particles so so for i am discussing for the time being free fermions for free fermions and you, this is what you have seen here so as soon as we lower temperature from some characteristic temperature here so all the values of for uh, fermions and this solid line that shows somehow the classical particle they also become the mu for them is also positive and it shows somehow the asymptotic behavior but we are not discussing any asymptotic behavior so we'll see only okay they are becoming positive after certain temperatures and what happens to bosons for free bosons in the limit where mu approaches zero at t is equal to a temperature equals t naught mu remains zero zero for all temperatures below so exactly this behavior that we are referring to so it reaches t naught becomes zero and remains zero so we now have to calculate the value or uh, the limit where it approaches t naught so so we have to use some older relationships that we derived for fermions so if you remember okay now first we write uh, the distribution function for the Bose Einstein distribution function is f if I remember we can use F symbol for this that is and we have the total number of particles total number of particles we just sum over all states and this will be given by sum over j we call this equation 2 So now we have to do two things. First, we have to convert this sum into an integral that we did several times actually. And the other thing is we have to put mu equal to zero. 
so what we do i write this here so we convert the sum into an integral because we are going to continuum limit and put mu equal to 0 why because we are we want to calculate t naught so always refer to the figure that I'm showing you. We are we are reaching here, so here we should be zero. So if you remember when we converted this uh, sum to integral, our shape of the n would change. So it will be like this: n will be equal to gamma times v. 0 to infinity d of e f of e d e where d of e was our uh, density of state function in energy space and that was d of e was given by c times e to the power one half and c was given by 1 over 4 pi squared 2m over h cut squared all raised to the power 3 half. This was our c and this was our d e and if we put back into equation 3 we get uh, the number of particles equal to gamma times v times c in the limit 0 to infinity e to the power 1 half d e uh, divided by beta naught because now we have put uh, mu is equal to 0 and then therefore the uh, t becomes t naught and therefore I write it explicitly in front of you so that you don't get confused so beta naught is basically 1 over kb t naught all right now we introduce change a variable for this integral so that change of variable is we put x equal to beta naught epsilon this will give us d e equals d x over beta naught and square root of e equals square root over x over beta naught and if we put back into our equation we get n equals gamma v c over beta naught raised to the power 3 half integral 0 to infinity x to the power 1 half divided by e to the power x minus 1 dx so this is a really interesting shape or really interesting equation we call this equation okay i enumerate every equation 
so this was our 3 I call this as 4 this equation becomes 4 this one and this one becomes our equation 5 and now we want to solve this integral this integral is actually pretty interesting and if we somehow we can write it like this in the form of another variable u as uh, s minus 1 divided by e to the power u minus 1 du so this integral is basically equal to a product of a gamma function gamma as a function of s and the, uh, the product is with the Riemann zeta function so Riemann zeta function s so this kind of integral is solved uh, in terms of uh, gamma functions multiplied with the zeta Riemann zeta function gamma is uh, uh, this thing is called Riemann Riemann zeta function and this is gamma function and both of these functions have their own uh, uh, limits and uh, approximations and for our case in equation 5 I discussed these approximations uh, but first I just uh, put uh, the values which we get for our equation 5 so our equation 5 if we use these values these uh, Riemann function and uh, gamma function we get n equal to gamma v c times k b c naught say to the power 3 half times gamma 3 half times e one zeta function 3 half and we will get these values somehow I will return to these uh, values of these gamma and uh, zeta functions I give you some approximations before that so okay this this we call our equation 6 so you can get the values of gamma and zeta functions online so there is a website known as o e i s dot org this stands for online encyclopedia of integer sequences and from there uh, you will get uh, Zeman three half equal to two point six one something. It's a long sequence, but okay. So you will get this value for uh, thing, and this gamma function you will get gamma 3 half will be equal to square root of pi half that is 0 0.886 and some integers so when you plug these values in the back in equation 6 you will get 
uh, okay not in six okay i will i will re uh, rearrange the equation six to, so that we will get uh, some uh, values of p naught first but okay and you can remember the gamma functions are also interesting you can write uh, gamma function n is always a subfactorial function of n minus one factorial and and gamma n half is you just remember uh, if you are stuck somewhere you can use this identities if you remember them correctly 2 to the power n minus 1 by 2 so let's go back to equation 6 and we extract some meaningful things out of that So now if you invert equation 6, you will get P naught equal to, so you had this KBT naught, so this is 3 power half, so you just invert it, so you will get T naught equal to from 6, that is N over V, that is to the power 2 by 3. 1 over gamma small gamma c capital gamma 3 half Riemann zeta 3 half times 1 over kb and you can further rearrange it t naught will be equal to s cut square over 2 m k b when you put the value of c in it so you will get 1 over gamma gamma p half riemann zeta p half everything raised to the power 2 3 Two third. So this is equation seven, and if you put now these values, you will get the accurate value of t naught. And our t naught is our t naught is our Bose Einstein condensation temperature. So there is the it, the story between uh, behind this Bose-Einstein uh, statistics and Bose-Einstein condensation. This terminology is very interesting. Uh, you should go on internet and have a look how how people uh, this uh, Subhash Chandra Bose and Einstein met, and then they uh, uh, developed this uh, theory to study the bosons. It's a really interesting story. So. This is Bose Einstein condensation temperature. Anyhow, in equation 7, and we now somehow see what Bose Einstein condensation actually means with the help of an animation that I saw online, and I must uh, show you that thing so that you can get an idea what happens uh, in case of Bose-Einstein condensation. So let's have a look at this. So this will show you how the lowering of temperature affects uh, the uh, movement of Bose particles and the energies which are basically connected to their temperature. So let's see what what happens. I I slow down the video so that you can uh, watch it somehow closely. Let's go. So here we we have a temperature scale or energy scale, whatever you call it. And we see these are the particles at, uh, you see the 
temperature is high so at higher temperatures the particles are free free bosons are moving uh, rapidly and uh, you see their distribution also if you see this uh, scale so the particles are distributed at various energy levels depending upon their speed and energy so now you see what ha what will happen when this uh, energy is lowered and the gas is cooled down atoms slow down and their energies decrease okay so particles go if you see now energy levels so particles are going slowly down in their energy levels so this is somehow schematic diagram this is energy uh, energy thing that is related to the particles so have a close look so if you see quantum nature uh, if you see the quantum nature the atoms behave as waves so you see particles have started to develop a kind of uh, waves surrounding them uh, that increase in size as temperature decreases so as soon as the temperature is decreased this wave nature becomes more pronounced so you see they, the wave nature becomes pronounced and this wave nature it also becomes uh, uh, they start somehow interaction with one another they become bigger waves become bigger not particles themselves but the waves associated with them and here you see the particles are decreasing very uh, lowering in their energy levels very fast so now the uh, wave function have strongly uh, started to overlap okay so you see at low temperatures all of the bosons are able to be at the very same energy in the same quantum states so you see this is the ground state and now most of the particles have uh, uh, come to the lower levels but still we are we have not reached yet the a T naught or Bose Einstein condensation temperature, so still they are moving. And now, all of a sudden, when we reach the ground states, what happened here? Can you see? They all reached, uh, they all somehow uh, dropped down to one energy level. If you see here, energy level on this uh, chart, and the, what happened to the wave functions? So, all the wave functions uh, united and they become one wave function. You see, that's really amazing. This is called the condensation, actually. That the, oh, every wave function has collapsed and become one wave function only. And now this wave function is, uh, it has limits until the end of this container or wherever this gas is. Single collective kind of quantum wave it has become. This is called this is called the Bose-Einstein condensate what you have read before and now uh, I am showing you on uh, YouTube animation that okay this is how it becomes and uh, as soon as now temperature is decreased so they will they will remain now there even below this temperature so these are the people who made this video possible so these are these are the references uh, for this uh, yeah, university uh, Paris suit and CNRS and uh, Palm scientific advisors Julian Bobrov. I really thank these guys who made this uh, really fantastic video for uh, our uh, Bose Einstein condensation lecture. Let's go back and study some other aspects of this uh, Bose Einstein condensation that we were doing previously. So what has been observed experimentally, so where this uh, T naught lies, actually I should discuss a little bit about that. So uh, experimental observations, of the Bose-Einstein, Condensates a 
are made in uh, alkaline elements are made in the confined atoms of alkaline elements at where in which i should write it in which the the b e both einstein temperature condensation temperature is of the order of Two hundred nanogalvans. So you see how low is the temperature. When this theory was developed, such low temperatures were not possible. But uh, now people are observing, are even producing these Bose-Einstein condensates uh, because we have now sophisticated uh, uh, refrigeration techniques based on liquid helium. So we can go to these lowest temperatures of two hundred nanogalvans. And we ca uh, this theory has uh, proven to be a uh, really good match with experiment. And experiment has become a very good match with theory. So, okay, so this is uh, as a discussion. So, I, I just now, uh, uh, if you want to read about this uh, theory and experiment together in some paper, so I refer to you another to refer you to another paper that is. If someone is interested, so that is this paper is Cornell et al. The paper name is the Bose-Einstein condensate. This is the title of the paper and it is published it was published in scientific american 76 volume 78 not 76 uh, volume 78 page 26 1998 so you can have a look if you want to read about Bose einstein condensates in this paper it's a really interesting paper we do another thing now. We estimate this uh, Bose-Einstein uh, condensation temperature via another method, and then we will compare. Okay, if we can uh, uh, compare these two temperatures that we uh, estimated, uh, that we calculated actually using equation seven. So we call this uh, heuristic uh, approach that we just do some estimate of the uh, Bose-Einstein temperature without a rigorous theory so let's estimate that so our topic is estimate of BE condensation temperature with heuristic approach So for this, uh, we assume, let's assume that we have some uh, particles, both particles, that some both particles find
in our volume v n v over n we write the volume like this volume per particle type thing and so the dimensions are so the dimensions in which in which a boson can be found are of the order of so we write this is the dimension delta x that is v over n raised to the power one third we call this equation A equation or relation A and we know very well about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle that if we have confined a particle a quantum particle in some space so it has some uncertainty in its momentum and position so from Heisenberg uncertainty principle so we should have a limitation on the uh, limitation in the accuracy with which we can locate in terms of momentum and in terms of position that is proportional to the Planck's constant we call this B this is our delta P so don't confuse it with phi so that is delta P and uh, if we now introduce uh, the value of delta X from 1 uh, from A so we will get delta P equals H times N over V the power one third so we call this equation C and the energy of the particles they are in the ground state the particles are in the ground state So, their energy is, I call it E naught or epsilon naught, that is Kb is of the order of Kb T naught. It is uh, somehow proportional to their thermal energy. And if we now put thermal energy, and thermal energy is related to Kb T naught is the kinetic energy of these particle that is del P square over 2 m and if we put now the value of del P we get T naught of the order of H square Planck's constant square divided by 2 m k b times n over v raised to the power 2 thirds. So this is the temperature, this is the Bose-Einstein temperature, we call this equation, our next equation is, uh, if you remember the next equation is 8. So equation 7 and 8 should give us Should give us almost same 
p naught values so you should go and uh, put various constant values in 7 and then put similar values in 8 and see if it uh, it turns out to be the same or, the, uh, or of the same order and now I should stop this lecture here because uh, during the next lecture we will do some similar stuff uh, in the regarding the Bose-Einstein uh, particles, Bose-Einstein statistics uh, at temperatures T less than T naught. So that would be a longer topic so I will not continue here. So we will meet next time. Bye-bye. Uh,